Okay, so we're getting ready now for uh, the second uh, talk of this session. Uh, the title is Efficient and Optimally Secure Key Length Extension for Block Ciphers via Randomized Cascading. And the authors are Peter Gazi, Stefano Tassaro. Peter will be giving the talk. Thank you very much. So uh, the topic uh, uh, of our paper is the question of key length extension for block ciphers and therefore uh, I will start by, by uh, uh, recalling the notion of a block cipher and introducing the, the problem of key length extension before getting to, to presenting our results. Uh, so, so block ciphers are uh, well known and widely used uh, cryptographic primitives uh, and we can see a block cipher as a mapping that that takes uh, n bits of, uh, of plain text and kappa bits of, uh, of a secret key and outputs n bits of, uh, of a cipher text in such a way that for every fixed key uh, the mapping obtained is a permutation on n bit strings uh, to be decodable, to, de to be decryptable, of course. Uh, and, but for most of the applications uh, of blocks, uh, that are using block ciphers, uh, the security guarantee that we actually uh, require from block ciphers uh, uh, is to be, to be a pseudo-random permutation, uh, which means that uh, the block cipher, when used with a secret uh, randomly chosen key, is indistinguishable from a random permutation, uh, this one. So uh, more precisely, we consider a distinguisher with, which can uh, participate in two different settings. Either it is uh, interacting with, with the block cipher that is uh, used with a random secret key that is hidden from the distinguisher, or it is uh, interacting with a randomly chosen permutation over the, the domain of the plain text of the block cipher. And uh, the distinguisher is allowed to ask both forward and backward queries to, to each of these permutations. And after some time and such an interaction, uh, it is expected to output a single bit representing its guess, whether, whether it's in the left or in the right world. Uh, then we can, of course, define the PRP advantage uh, of this distinguisher against the block cipher, uh, which is the difference in probabilities uh, that the distinguisher outputs one uh, in both of these worlds. And we can talk about the PRP security of the block cipher in question uh, to be uh, the amount of resources that a distinguisher needs uh, to achieve a constant distinguishing advantage between these two settings, uh, constant meaning, for example, one half. Uh, we still need to make more precise what, what we mean by, by resources and what are the resources that we care about, and I will do this, but uh, before that, let me, let me make uh, a simple observation about the security of block ciphers. Uh, if a block cipher is, is to be a good pseudorandom permutation, uh, it is essential that uh, its key length is uh, sufficient. Uh, this is because, because the distinguisher can always mount the following attack. Uh, uh, if he's given an oracle, which, I, I, which is either the permutation or, or the block cipher, he can uh, in issue a, a, one, a single query to this oracle, let's say all zeros, uh, and then try, try to encrypt the same, the same value all, uh, of all zeros uh, using the block cipher E, uh, with all possible keys on his own, and of course uh, comparing the results to the result that was obtained in the in the first step, and uh, uh, if a match occurs, uh, this uh, this suggests that that the key that was used for the encryption is actually the key that is being used for the block cipher, and that the distinguisher is actually talking to the block cipher, so he is in the right scenario, uh, and not in the left one. And this can be easily verified by the distinguisher uh, by using a a different, uh, different input. Uh, and th this whole attack just requires two to the kappa uh, evaluations of E, so, so this is an upper bound, since, since it allows the distinguisher to, to succeed in his distinguishing task. Uh, this is an upper bound to the, to the PRP security of the block cipher E, uh, which can be a problem for block ciphers such as DES uh, that, uh, that have an unacceptably short uh, key length, only 56 bits, but uh, Apart from that, they do not show serious uh, structural weaknesses. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that this attack is generic, uh, meaning that it can be mounted on any, any, any block cipher, even one that is, uh, that is flawlessly designed, so uh, it, it upper bounds the PRP security of any block cipher. Uh, and motivi motivated by this trivial brute force attack, 
uh, the question that we, that we address uh, is that of a uh, key length extension. Uh, so uh, if we are given a blo uh, block cipher E, uh, uh, our goal is to, to come up with a construction that uses this block cipher and, and uh, results uh, again in a block cipher with the same block length, but uh, with a key length that is, that is greater than the previous one and uh, in, uh, does it in such a way that, uh, that uh, also the security uh, increases with respect to generic attacks, meaning that, that the best generic attack on this construction E prime uh, requires more than two to the Kappa construct, uh, queries or evaluations. So uh, it requires more effort than the brute force attack on the, on the underlying block cipher E uh, that I described. Uh, in order to capture this, uh, these generic attacks, uh, the model that we use is the, the ideal block cipher model, and we model the, uh, the underlying block cipher E as being ideal and therefore pro uh, providing a, uh, uh, an independent, uniformly, randomly chosen permutation for each of, uh, of the keys. Uh, so the actual formulation of the key length extension problem in, in the ideal cipher model looks as follows. We have a distinguisher uh, that is, again, in one of the two worlds. Uh, and uh, in the first world, he's allowed to, to query a random permutation, and in, in the second world, he can query the uh, key extension construction. Uh, but apart from that, he's also allowed in both worlds to, to query the ideal block cipher E, which in the right world is actually the same block cipher that is, that is underlying our construction. And he can query this block cipher uh, in both di direction, meaning he is allowed to issue encryption and decryption queries under an arbitrary key of his choice. Uh, then we evaluate the complexity of such a distinguisher to be, to be the, uh, the total amount of all queries that it has issued during its interaction in the experiment. And now we can make the, the PRP security definition that I mentioned before uh, more precise by asking how many such queries does the distinguisher actually need uh, to achieve uh, this constant distinguishing advantage in, uh, in distinguishing the two settings uh, described above. So this is a key, uh, key length extension problem. And before I move to, uh, to our results in, the, in this area, uh, I would like to mention two existing approaches to, to key length extension. The first one uh, uh, is cascading. This is, the, this is based on the, the easy idea that you, if you have a block cipher, uh, what you can do is apply it multiple times with independently chosen keys. And what you get is an encryption by a new uh, block cipher that has a, a higher, uh, greater key length. Uh, the trivial application of this approach leads to double encryption, but it is uh, well known that double encryption uh, is susceptible to the meet in the middle attack, uh, which I'll now briefly, briefly review. So what the distinguisher can do when he's given an oracle, which is either a double encryption or a random permutation, he can, uh, again, uh, query this, this oracle for, for a value, say, uh, all zeros, uh, then he can use his block cipher oracle to, to encrypt this value all zeros under all possible keys, uh, obtaining all possible intermediate values denoted by u here in the figure. Uh, then he can uh, do the same from the other side, so uh, he can take this value y that he obtained in the first step and try to decrypt it with all possible keys. Uh, obtaining another set of intermediate of possible intermediate values, and then he can just uh, try to find the match between these two sets of values. And if such a match is found, it suggests that the the corresponding keys uh, were the keys used in the double encryption, and that that the distinguisher is actually talking to the double encryption and not to a random permutation. And this can again be verified by by uh, uh, by using other values here. Uh, and uh, we can see that this attack only requires two to the kappa uh, evaluations uh, of the block cipher and its inverse. So this, this gives us that uh, the double encryption doesn't provide any significant security increase, uh, which leaves us with uh, triple encryption as being the shortest possible cascade where we can expect uh, some uh, reasonable security increase. And indeed, it was shown by Bellar and Rogaway uh, that triple encryption is secure up to two to the kappa plus minimum of n half and kappa half queries, also in the ideal cipher model. And there is also an upper bound on the security uh, for, the, for the case of triple deaths used with independent keys, which was given by Lux. 
And uh, it was also observed by Uli Maurer and myself that uh, for the case of longer cascades, uh, the security improves further with, uh, with the length of the cascade uh, if the block cipher uh, has smaller key length than message length. Uh, so the second, this was, this was the first approach, cascading, and the second approach that I want to mention, because it will be useful later, uh, is, uh, is the approach of key whitening, uh, which, which is, for example, used in the, in the, the in this X uh, construction proposed by Rivest, and uh, uh, it's based on the, on the idea of using, using uh, additional keys to, to hide the inputs and outputs of the block cipher uh, by a simple XOR operation. Indeed, it was, uh, this, this construction was, was studied also by Even and Mansour, as, as, uh, as discussed in the previous talk, and uh, it was shown to be secure up to 2 to the k plus n half queries in the ideal cipher model by Kilian and Rogeway. Uh, and this proof also covers the case uh, if the two keys used for, for the whitening steps uh, are the same, so if there is just a single key for the, for the whitening. Uh, so from what we have seen so far, uh, we know that uh, none of the efficient constructions that we, uh, that we mentioned uh, so, uh, so far was secure beyond 2 to the uh, kappa plus, the minimum of n, uh, n half and kappa half queries. And if we want to achieve a security uh, beyond the basic level of 2 to the maximum of kappa plus n, uh, kappa or, or n, maximum of kappa on, or n, uh, we have to pay a price for that in terms of efficiency because we have to use the triple encryption and that requires three block cipher queries uh, per single invocation. So the question that we actually ask is what can be achieved with more efficient constructions and uh, we take a look at constructions that issue at most two queries to the underlying block cipher uh, per invocation. Um, so let, uh, let me now... Uh, uh, address this question by first showing what we cannot achieve and uh, giving a f uh, describing uh, some generic attacks that, that we give in the paper. Uh, first, we, we uh, focus our attention on one query constructions that only issue a single, single query to the, to the underlying block cipher. And we show that none of these queries can be expected to, to provide a, a reasonable security increase because uh, they cannot be secure beyond the the bound of 2 to the maximum of k pi and n. Uh, I'll briefly sketch the proof of the, uh, of, or the attack, uh, but only for, uh, for a special case of constructions that, uh, that are injective in the way that for a, uh, for a fixed key, uh, uh, distinct inputs to the construction imply distinct queries to the underlying block cipher. Uh, this is a special case, but uh, in the paper we prove this statement for, for all one query constructions. So what the distinguisher can do uh, in such a setting, uh, he can first is issue two to the n plus k, uh, k per half uh, random queries, uh, distinct queries to, to the underlying block cipher. Uh, in the second step, he issues the same number of queries to the Oracle O, which is either the construction or a random permutation. And in the third step, he doesn't issue any queries to the Oracles at all. He just performs some computation. In, uh, more precisely, he tries to evaluate uh, the construction by himself on all the values that were queried in the second step, on all these y values. Uh, but of course, he can evaluate the construction only if he knows the answer of the query that the construction would ask to the underlying block cipher. And, and the only way he could have learned this value was in the first step by querying the, the block cipher itself. Uh, but uh, based on the numbers of queries that were asked in the first and the second step and on the injectivity property that we assume, uh, we can expect that, uh, for, uh, that at least for one, one y value, this will be possible, and distinguisher be, will be able to, to evaluate this construction. He will try to do it for all possible keys k, uh, k prime. And, uh, and of course, if he manages to uh, evaluate the construction, he will, he will compare the, uh, the, the result with, uh, with the value that he obtained uh, in, the, in the second step. And, uh, uh, if he's actually talking to, to the construction, this, this check will succeed if the right key is used. But uh, in the case he's talking to a random permutation, this will most pr the check will most probably fail. So this allows him to distinguish. Uh, it takes some more technical work to show that, that uh, uh, constructions then, that don't issue uh, injective queries do no better in, in, this, in this aspect. Uh, and then combining these two claims, we can arrive at the, at the above, above statement for all one-query constructions. 
So this, of course, uh, leads to questions about two query constructions. Uh, what can we say about, two, uh, about them? Uh, here we also give a, give an attack, give an upper bound on security. Uh, we show that uh, for, a, for a wide and very natural class of two query constructions, uh, they can achieve at most two to the k plus n half uh, uh, query security. Uh, and this is, again, the class of constructions with injective queries, meaning, meaning that for a fixed key, uh, uh, distinct, distinct inputs to the construction imply distinct first queries, and distinct outputs from the first query imply distinct second queries by the construction. Uh, but as, uh, if we look at the bound, we see that this, this already allows for some, uh, some uh, significant security improve, improvement, and uh, therefore we can look for a, for a two query constructions construction that would, that would achieve this. And this is what we actually uh, uh, provide as the main result of our paper. So let me finally get to presenting our construction. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's very simple. It's, uh, it uses the paradigm that was discussed also in the, in the last talk. Uh, and uh, it, it is just a double encryption with two, uh, two additional whitening steps, one, one taking place before the encryption and one taking place between the encryptions. Uh, we use the same key Z for, for both of the whitening steps. And for the encryption steps, we derive the, sec we derive the second key from the first key by a simple uh, public publicly known operation like just a single bit flip. So we need an n bit long key for the whitening steps and a k bit long key, k bit long key for the encryption steps, meaning that the total key length of our construction is k plus n. And the main result of our paper is that actually this uh, double XOR cascade, as we call the construction, uh, is secure up to two to the k plus n half queries. So it means, meets the upper bound that was given by the generic attack that I presented earlier on two query constructions, uh, and is uh, in this sense optimal in this class. Uh, I will not uh, give the whole proof, of course, of the security of the construction, but I will just mention some, uh, some important points. So let me recall that the, uh, uh, that the initial setting that we are considering is the setting with a distinguisher that is, uh, has access to an ideal block cipher and either a random permutation or, or, uh, or a block cipher and our construction using this block cipher. Uh, and the goal of, uh, of our proof is to show that the distinguishing advantage of this distinguisher must be small if he issues significantly less than two to the k plus and half queries. Uh, how we do this is that we actually reduce it to a simpler combinatorial problem uh, and show this to be hard, which is uh, again related to the previous talk. So the, the new problem that we, that we are considering uh, here uh, is the problem of distinguishing uh, only permutations, so it doesn't involve block ciphers at all. And uh, the, the setting looks as, as follows. We have a distinguisher who either has, uh, is given access to two permutations that are independent and uniformly randomly chosen, or he is given uh, access to two permutations that are uh, randomly chosen but correlated in such a way that they satisfy this equation for a random secret value z meaning that if they were used in our construction instead of the encryption steps and Z would be the, the whitening key, then the whole construction would result to an identity. And we show that distinguishing these two settings is hard for less than two to the uh, and half queries. And we also show that this actually implies the desired bound on the security of our construction that I claimed. So before I, I get to some final remarks uh, and, uh, and conclusions, let me just, uh, just mention one last thing uh, on the design of our construction. Uh, one might, might be tempted to consider uh, even simpler constructions using just, just uh, a single whitening step, uh, either before the encryption steps, in between, or after, after the two encryption steps. Or one might uh, want to consider a construction where the two whitening steps are used in a more symmetric way meaning uh, before and after both encryptions. But it turns out that all, all of these constructions can be attacked in two to the maximum of k and n queries, and therefore, uh, therefore do not provide the, uh, the desired security increase that, that we achieve by our construction. Uh, so let me, let me summarize the, the contribution of our paper. Uh, we presented a new key length, key length ex extending construction for block ciphers, which is, uh, both more efficient than triple encryption because it requires only two block cipher calls uh, per invocation. 
And it is also more secure than triple encryption for certain parameters of uh, k pi and n. Uh, here you can compare the two bounds. And we also give uh, generic attacks that support uh, the uh, optimality of our construction uh, within the class. Uh, these attacks show that uh, any one query construction uh, can be attacked or is insecure for, for more than two to the maximum of k pi and n uh, queries. And uh, uh, no two query construction from the class of injective uh, constructions uh, can be secure beyond the bound of two to the k pi plus n half, which is the bound achieved by our construction. So this is our contribution. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Uh, we do have uh, a little bit of time for a question or two. And a small comment which applies to uh, the previous two talks. Uh, what, what you define as a query uh, is actually a combination of two very different types of queries. In one of them, you are uh, looking at an uh, encryption algorithm and there is a secret key embedded in it, and you are doing uh, some kind of uh, chosen message. Well, it is, it is true that these are two uh, different types of squares that they represent something else uh, or two different things. Uh, uh, actually, some of, the, some of the results that I mentioned uh, do, do this, uh, make distinction between these queries. For example, the result for uh, this x. Uh, but uh, we, we took the more common approach to consider only the sum of the queries as the complexity measure for the, for the, advanced, uh, for the distinguisher, uh, which is the usual way. Uh, I think... Uh, you typically, if, if the bound is uh, two to the k plus n half, you, you, for example, in the attacks, you need to uh, uh, to ask two to the n queries to the to the per, uh, of of the more complicated type that you d discuss, so uh, that you you named as a more complicated type. So, so this this would be the more fine-grained uh, formulation of our results. But we we give the sum of the of the queries. Well, since we are working in the in the ideal cipher model, we uh, we don't need any additional assumptions about uh, about the block cipher. This is sufficient because in the ideal cipher model, the the permutations performed for each of the keys are uh, are independently random. Uh, but in practice, if you would use a use a block cipher in this construction, you would need some uh, some degree of uh, uh, some security against key key related uh, attacks, but uh, in a, in a quite mild form. But of course, you could use this construction also with, uh, with independent keys for, for the two uh, encryption steps. Uh, the whole proof would go, go through uh, exactly the same way, uh, only you would have a, have a high, uh, larger key length uh, and the same security. So you could use independent keys if you wanted. But in the ideal cipher model, you don't need to. Okay, so... Uh, let's thank Peter.